You're holding up the train for everybody. Step off or I gotta drag you off. Step off or I have to drag you off. Because you're holding up the train for all these people trying to go Why home. Why am I holding up a train when I'm sitting on here when I'm going to Brooklyn? Grab your stuff and get us out. No, I will not grab my stuff and get off. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Get off of me. Just step off. Get off of me. Get off the train. Sorry, see NYPD officers uh, attacking a homeless man on a train. Uh, wait till you find out the reason. Because when you find out, I want you guys to first uh, keep that picture in your head of how empty that train was, because that's a big part about this whole thing. Um, he was taking up too much room. Let's keep it real. He was just spreading all over the place because all those seats were totally taken. Anyways, um, they went through more of their attack on him on the platform as well because he stood up and said, don't touch me. And why do I have to get kicked off this train for sitting down? Yeah, that was the beginning of this. Here's more of it. Why are you Sit down. Stop. Sit down. Hurry up. Sit down on the floor. Sit down on the floor. Just another uh, hard day's work for a couple of NYPD police officers there. Did they go home and they say, good job. Hey, honey, I had a tough day, you know, just beat up a guy who was sitting on a train and kicked his stuff around, choked him and pepper sprayed him. It was a great day. I can't wait to go back tomorrow. Should be fulfilling yet again. Here's all that went down. Police officer punched and dragged this homeless man who was allegedly taking up more than one seat on a near empty subway train in Manhattan. That's the body camera video from May of 2020 showed. Uh, that homeless man, uh, Joseph T, is as they, um, as they identified him. Uh, and then they charged him with felony assault because he hurt the cop's hand. Let's go for more of this though. Uh, Manhattan District Attorney uh, Cyrus Vance is charging the bloodied man with felony assault, punishable by up to seven years in prison for allegedly kicking the officer's hand while the cop tried to cuff him on the platform. The cuffing that came after the punching, the kicking of his stuff around and the pepper spray in his face and the choking of his neck. I'm sorry, the strangulation of his neck. Uh, more, it was around 12.30 AM on May 25th, according to a criminal complaint when police approached Joseph because officer Shamul Saha said he was occupying more than one seat on that near empty train as we saw over and over and over again. So police then followed him. Who, uh, Joseph, who uh, is a hairstylist by trade, said he didn't understand why cops were ordering him to exit the train and he refused to do so. And that body camera video uh, showed all of that go down. So um, now we've talked, I've, I've seen this before. It, it was something I've seen in the past several years. Uh, many folks on trains are like, look at this man spreading that happens. It's a full train and this guy's just gapped open, bag next to him, legs spread wide open and no one else can do anything. And no one really wants to sit next to you when you're sitting like that in the first place. This is a whole different extreme level to that. Apparently cops weren't called to this. Maybe they just saw him and said, oh, I'm bored. That guy's sitting wrong, I don't like it. Uh, I'm not sure if a fare wasn't paid, that wasn't mentioned, I don't know. Uh, but the beating definitely happened. Uh, there's more that went down for this though, Miranda. But first, your first reactions to this uh, attack, let's keep it real. Yeah, so nothing enrages me quite like police going after the homeless. And especially for absolutely no reason. I lived in New York and do you know how many times I saw people taking up multiple seats, more than two seats on a busy train? And nothing, I've take, I've set my bag on a seat next to me. Does that mean I need to be assaulted by the cops that are gonna come in and just yell at me and attack me and tell me to get off the train? Absolutely not. They beat this man senseless for no reason. It turns out the cop that said that he kicked his hand, he punched him so many times he hurt his own hand punching him and then said, "Oh, he kicked me and hurt my hand, that's assault. He did it to himself and then they charged him with felony assault for it. And this man was afraid to have, he was in the, the body cam footage showed that the cops were in the wrong and this man was completely innocent. 
And he's still afraid to have his full name put in the article for fear of retaliation. For fear of retaliation, what does that say about policing in this country? It says that once they see that body cam footage is when they increase those charges and went with the felony assault, as you mentioned. But let's jump down to graphic five, because things shifted once I guess this whole thing is made public because they did see that body cam footage. So what's the point of that? The point is that public publications like the city have to say things like this. Former Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance dropped the cop assault charges against Joseph just days after the city reported the case and published the body camera footage. Last March, Joseph sued NY, uh, the New York City NYPD Officer Long and his partner, uh, Officer Saha. The, the filing in Manhattan District Federal Court argued that the officers falsely claimed that Joseph tried to run away from the cops and shoved along and kicked his right hand. By the way, they're trying to kick him off the train. What if he did run away? Who cares? You're trying to get him off the train. Was he under arrest? I guess at some point after you've uh, beaten him enough, then you have to have that reason. More though, um, uh, Long actually cut his right hand by repeatedly punching him. Joseph then, uh, while the cops used that excessive force, made that false arrest and fabricated evidence. That's according to that complaint. And the Adams administration settled the case on December 21st without admitting any wrongdoing. But they did admit and give up $135,000 to Joseph T there. Um, and again, who's paying for that? Maybe things have changed. Maybe the officers are gonna begin to be on the hook for these uh, large payouts to people that they just beat up. Or maybe they get their jobs right back and come back and do it again and taxpayers pay for this. At what point, since we're talking about taxpayers getting shafted all the time, when are we gonna stop getting shafted with paying off police brutality? I don't wanna pay for it. How come I have to pay for it? I hear conservatives always say, I don't wanna pay for you freeloading libs that just don't wanna work by getting a livable wage and taxing the richest of the rich and the corporations, things like that, you know? But this, I guess, is just okay, back to blue. Pay for their lawsuits that are obviously tried to avoid. Um, so the attacks continued. I don't know if you have last thoughts on this, Miranda. What are you thinking? I'm just the fact that he doesn't have to pay anything and he doesn't have to admit any wrongdoing, and it's just, uh, oh, bad, don't do that. Like, what is that going to accomplish? This man has a history of excessive force use for which he's paid. Practically nothing out of pocket, if anything at all. And you're right, it's all coming from the pack, the taxpayers. Every time there's a payout from a lawsuit for misconduct by a cop, it comes out of taxpayer money. I would much rather that money be going towards public institutions and education and healthcare, but it's not. We're paying cops for their bad behavior. We Maybe are. helping to get some of these folks off the street since that's one of the big things. Because nobody wants that, but we're gonna have to pay folks after cops beat them up. And they're gonna probably resent him further. How dare he? He's homeless man now has six figures worth of money. And they'll be mad about that too.